Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Ooh, today it's Backyard Foxes. Uh, today's inspiration uh, for this program is right up there. That is the uh, a cover article uh, that I wrote for the Missouri Conservationist Magazine uh, back, ooh, 93, 94, when I wrote the article. It got published in their Conservationist Magazine December of 1994. Uh, and I it was really maybe really proud. I, I do remember the first the feeling I got the first time you walk in somewhire in a waiting room and uh, the, the tire place and I looked down and I saw that laying there going, hey, I wrote that. That's pretty cool. So but people have seen this up there uh, behind me and have asked me about it. So I thought I would do a quick program on it. And it is about the two major foxes uh, in North America. And the ones that we commonly see or fairly commonly see, you can see throughout much of the range. And the the whole press idea behind the article when I wrote it was, of course, to how to differentiate the two, but also about their history and, and distribution across the country. So I thought it'd be a good, good short program here for us on Mark's Backyard Birds. So the two major foxes uh, in, the, in the United States in lower 48, uh, by far the most common is going to be the, where is it? There it is, the red fox. The red fox is the one of the most widely distributed mammals on the planet. Not only do they occur here uh, in North America and, and you know, the old world, uh, Eurasia, it, they've been introduced into many places, including uh, like Australia. So it is a really widespread animal. Um, but the, the history of this animal is kind of interesting in the U.S. So we're going to get into that. But the other one that they're going to be talking about is the gray fox. Not quite as well known. Uh, it's a smaller animal and it's uh, really more southern in nature. And when I... Uh, my first, when I first started writing the article, I came up with, uh, it made me think of the old story of Billy Yank and Johnny Reb. I don't know if you know that reference, but and of course it's a Civil War reference when, you know, the North and the South. And that's kind of how these, these foxes were and historically. The the red foxes were confined to the very northern regions of North America and barely actually got down into uh, the lower 48 states, except down to the mountain regions, the Rocky Mountain regions and areas like that. Um, the, uh, the gray fox was the southern uh, version of that, the Johnny Reb, if you will, and it was far more southern in nature and a, a very woodland uh, uh, fox in nature, very, very secretive and sneaky, and, and people didn't see them. as. But the, the, the red fox is more out in the open and more grassland. It, the, the, they, the two didn't over, overlap, and overlap, sorry. Well, things change. And when I wrote the article... And my and by the historic teachings in wildlife school and and that I learned it as is that the red fox, like I said, didn't come down into the lower 48 states. I know they expanded their range later when we started developing the, the, the range. But what happened was, and the whenever we got colonial settlement from the Europeans, they loved their old fashioned fox hunts, the fox chases with the hounds and uh, and the horses and chase them all across the the, the countryside and treat and, and finally finally uh, catch them. Well, they wanted to do that when they settled this country. And when they brought their, their hounds over and their horses over and they started their uh, their fox chasing in most of the country, all they were chasing were the gray foxes. Uh, and, and especially down, you know, like I said, the lower 48. And they found that the gray foxes didn't play fair. They climb trees. And I have people who question that one. I remember when I wrote this article, somebody wrote a letter to the conservation department and said is, I don't know what Mark McKellar was smoking when he wrote this article, but foxes can't climb trees. Yes, they can. Here's here's visual proof of it. And uh, we I remember the conservation department in uh, the question and answer section had put a picture in of the, a fox up in a tree, a, a gray fox up in a tree. Yes, they climb trees, uh, which is pretty unique. Uh, they're awesome. And they so but the fox hunters didn't like that. And so what they had to do is they had to go back to Europe 
and they had to trap a bunch of foxes and bring them over here and let them go so they had their they could have their traditional fox hunts. And of course, those bred and they they started to spread to spread across the lower forty eight states. Well, what's going on at that same time, of course, is development and clearing of forest and and things in in the lower forty eight. And so those northern populations of the red fox started creeping south. And so they started, of course, interbreeding with that that population from uh, and, and from Europe. And like I said, I, when I wrote the article, it was widely believed that uh, the, the the foxes here in the lower forty eight states are were the European race. Uh, it, but the, there's a, a study came out in, in like 2012 about the uh, uh, mitochondrial DNA where they can uh, test the the DNA in, in these animals, and they found that there's not hardly any European fox uh, markers left in North America. So it now is believed that the the northern bird, northern foxes, red foxes that descended, uh, actually kind of overtook and and, and and outbred, if you will, those uh, uh, European foxes that were introduced. Now they're the same species, anyways. Now they're they're vulpes vulpes uh, is the, the scientific name for the red fox, and now they're pretty widespread all across the country. There's you know, certain regions that are not nearly as common in, but they they uh, they do occupy. Uh, most grasslands, and that's one thing that's really bad for that, uh, is a much larger and a much more dominant canine uh, is the coyote, and the coyotes eat red foxes. Uh, they'll also eat the gray ones if they can catch them, but for the most part, uh, out in grassland areas when the red foxes are there, uh, they're, they're in real danger from the coyotes. So uh, the, the red foxes are, are, are still very prevalent. And around, uh, and and we see them. I get lots of pictures sent to me, and people happy they've seen a, a red fox in their background, uh, in their backyard. Sorry, and they're and they are all wonderful. The little gray foxes again. It, it's more secretive in nature, and like I said, it's more woodland and oriented too. But the reason I I titled the program the tail T A I L of two foxes is because I've always used the tail to help differentiate them. Because in color forms, the the red foxes can actually be quite gray. Uh, they can be all the way to black, and I got a picture of that here for you in a minute. But if you look at the tip of the tail, the, the red foxes will have white tips to their tail where if you look at the tip of the tail of a gray fox, it has a black tip to its tail. So that's the, that's the kind of the secret with the name, the tail of two foxes. Uh, and they're, it, they're absolutely stunning animals, and they're very, very smart, and uh, we love seeing them. Now, a real privilege is to get to see a silver fox. This is a much more rare version of a red fox. It is a red fox. It's just the color form is silver or black. And the, and, and uh, they're, of course, their pelts are really valuable and, and things. And uh, they, where I've been privileged to see two of these animals in my life, both of them happened on Fort Liberty, or else it's called, in North Carolina. We worked there as a biologist. Had one that was hit by a car, and then we found, had another one that was uh, injured and, and found and brought into the uh, the vet there, and uh, they, they're incredible. Black is a great color for survival in a fire ecology community, and in the Sand Hills region of North Carolina, where I grew up and where where Fort Liberty is, uh, black is a good color to survive because it burns often, and and uh, like black fox squirrels do really really well there for they're well camouflaged, and as a predator. Being that black color is an advantage too. So uh, the silver fox is really an unusual one, but a fantastic animal. Uh, let's see, a couple of other things. Uh, a male fox is called a dog or a toad, a tod, or and the females, of course, are known as vixens. And young foxes are kits or pups, um, and they are uh, terrific animals. Important. Uh, at predators and controlling mice and uh, populations. Their their ability to hear is incredible. I know you've probably seen videos of them uh, jumping up in the air and pouncing down in the snow or pouncing down in that tall grass. They they use their ears to locate the the sound that they're and they'll jump in the air and they'll come down on them uh, and and try to catch the mouse or the vole or uh, the little rabbit or anything that's in there. So uh, the foxes are a truly important part of our ecosystem. Not a bird, don't have feathers, of course, but still uh, an animal that uh, raises curiosity. If you're a, a nature lover, then you might enjoy learning more about them. So 
thought I'd do that today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, give us a like, give us a share. Please send in ideas for more of those programs because that really helps. Um, and I want to talk about what you do. We'll be on uh, again. Our live, I think, is this Thursday night. And we'll talk to you then. So come by. Let's talk birds.